Let's welcome everybody to the Coaches in the Mouth pod. This is Coach Jeff Williams along with Coach Bray Cook. Coach, Ben's we're a moving partner, around, man. Coach. New, we're moving around. We're on the, I mean, we're, we're just on the road here. Yeah. I love it. Last episode, we were on the uh, on the back deck out there towards yeah. Beaver Lake. Now, yeah. now we're back in Fayetteville uh, here at Ben's apartment on Dixon Street. Um, phenomenal little spot uh, right behind Campbell and Craft. Uh, membership only. So, yeah. Coach, if you're interested in getting a, getting a membership here, uh, FayettevilleSecret.com, and you can go ahead and apply for one, and they'll set up a consultation for you. Man, this is a cool place. I mean, you it's got not a bad. Cool table, you got you know the little beautiful pictures on the wall. Great owners, it's a really cool place. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a real big guest. We had a lot of big news coming out this week. Big uh, week, big week with the uh, unconfirmed, but unconfirmed right an now. An unconfirmed, as, as very big week. Yes, yeah. as we're recording this, but it looks like. Uh, we have uh, John Calipari, Coach John Calipari, coming in as our new – replacing Eric Musselman as our, our new basketball coach here mm -hmm. at the University of Arkansas. And the big thing it's been talking about is first was, you know, how will the University of Arkansas guide him? Well, that's NIL. Mm -hmm. It looks like uh, a big donor is coming in to, uh, to uh, really push NIL for the University of Arkansas, especially the basketball program. So yep. what other ways would you want to do besides bring on uh, – Chris Bowers, the head of the Arkansas Edge NIL Fund for mm -hmm. the University of Arkansas. And maybe he can answer some questions for us as far as, uh, you know, how the NIL works and people that have been given to the foundation, how can they give to the NIL, mm -hmm. and that part, and ask some hard questions to him. And that's the thing is, you know, you, you have such a big name coming in, uh, leaving a, a place that he has created and built yeah. uh, to come here to Arkansas. Well, why is he doing that? Well, it sounds like it's – um, and a lot of reasons because of NIL. So who better to ask than the director of the Arkansas Edge, Chris Bauer. Great. Yep. Big, big news coming out. we got a lot of things going on here. And we're going to get into it with Chris here. Uh, Talk to us a little bit about your background and how you got involved with the Arkansas Edge part of it. Yeah, and thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be here. So, um, you know, it's a uh, it's kind of a windy, twisty road that I took to get here. A little bit of a non-traditional hire from outside of athletics um, to, to take on this role. Um, but I'm originally from Arkansas, uh, from Hot Springs. I uh, grew up there, grew up a Razorback fan, came to school here um, in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, was involved on all, in all kinds of groups on campus, worked in the athletic department, um, and moved on from there to a, a fundraising role at Duke University in the athletic department there for a couple of years. Um, you know, went to grad school, uh, entered the business world, worked mostly in marketing and advertising uh, for the next 15 years of my career uh, at Axiom in Little Rock and then Axiom's parent company, Interpublic Group, um, was a VP of marketing for a couple of their advertising agencies and uh, worked on a number of solution a number of solutions that we launched there uh, that uh, that were related to affiliate marketing and influencer marketing. And if you think about it, that's kind of what NIL is, is influencer marketing. Um, student athletes using their brand, the power of their brand, uh, to help nonprofits in the community and to, to help businesses uh, promote their business and their product and service. And so... Um, you know, when, when this position was announced, when they announced Arkansas edge at the Duke basketball game in November, um, you know, I said, what the heck? Like, uh, I love the university of Arkansas, uh, you know, want us to, you know, be competitive in every sport. And, um, I thought I could take all of the experience in my background uh, and, and, and if you package that up, I could bring that to bear for this position to help get Arkansas edge off the ground, uh, to help build out this program, to help, um, do the fundraising, uh, the corporate partnerships, uh, you know, that we want to do with, uh, student athletes and, and with brands, uh, to build out the, the membership club that we've launched. And, uh, so I thought, you know, my background was um, a perfect fit 
for this role. And then you put on top of that, that I'm a passionate hog fan. I love, I love the Razorbacks. I want us to win. I was in the Razorback band in college. So, you know, just part of that, um, uh, that school spirit that I have, I love the Razorbacks and, you know, thought it would be a, a great, be a great opportunity. Um, you know, I started inter- interviewing for the position and it really just seemed to be a great fit on all sides. And so it moved pretty quickly, uh, and took over, um, kind of stepped into the role the second week of January. And here we are three months later. And I feel like it's been three years already. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Well, and, and you got into it a little bit, you know, whatever your opinion is on NIL, it ain't going anywhere. That's now right. there might be some restrictions later on down the road or whatever, yeah. but it's not going anywhere. And the people that are competitive, they've got big NIL and, right. uh, I mean, that's just the way of the world. That's right. Talk to us a little bit about your role and, uh, you know, where's this thing headed and yeah. just, you know, just obviously just yeah. started in, in no, you know, almost December yeah. and, uh, where it's headed and, yeah. and what do you see? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, and I go back to NIL for a moment, just kind of overall. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. It's only, it's going to continue. It's going to evolve and change. I mean, I was just reading this morning. I have all kinds of news feeds on sort of what's the latest and what's happening across the country with NIL. Uh, you know, the NCAA is proposing, uh, some, uh, uh, policy that they want to get passed within the next month that would change some of the rules for NIL. Um, there's a group that's trying to pull together a new conference of sorts, uh, like a power, f- bring all the power f- four, power five schools together, uh, into one separate group. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are sort of percolating, you know, across the country, uh, with what will happen with NIL. It's not going to go anywhere, but it is going to evolve. And, uh, you know, it's a, you've heard people talk about it being the wild west, you know, and, uh, it is a little bit right. And it, and it has been, especially like two and a half, three years ago when it first was announced, uh, uh, in the Supreme court's, you know, decision, uh, and it kind of opened up and, uh, it was off to the races, right? And never, and there were, the rules were very unclear. There weren't really any rules. Uh, and then there were rules that were drafted quickly. And then, you know, there've been modifications to those rules and uh, over time. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a very like murky, um, um, way forward for student athletes, for coaches, for universities and athletic departments, uh, for the parents of, of prospective student athletes, um, for collectives, uh, it's been, uh, you know, a, a very, uh, rocky road, uh, and you've seen that, uh, play out in some of the NCAA investigations that have, um, you know, resulted in penalties and fines and, and other consequences over the last couple of months with some schools around the, around the country. Obviously, a big one is what has happened with the University of Tennessee and the uh, injunction um, uh, on that case, uh, which is in some ways made things easier, but also made it a little bit murkier, too, because now what are the rules, right? You've basically suspended some rules, and so, um, uh, and it's unclear how that's going to turn out. So, how do you proceed forward um, it, with that uh, lack of clarity? And so it's been, uh, you know, it, it's been a, a, an, a roller coaster over the last couple of years for it. And every university has tackled that differently. Um, you know, trying to figure out the right model that works for their program. Um, I don't think there's a one size fits all model um, that, that works. And, and so that's why you've seen universities um, evolve their programs. And that's what's happened here too, right? Um, there's been a couple of different models that have been applied for NIL um, for Arkansas. And now Arkansas Edge is kind of the newest model for uh, how to support it. And, um, you know, there have been some uh, restrictions on what previous efforts could do um, based upon uh, IRS uh, uh, you know, code or, uh, NCAA policy that they were trying to follow. Uh, and so, you know, what we've evolved into now is, uh, with Arkansas edge is a, 
I, I call it kind of a three, three pronged approach uh, or uh, three legs of the stool uh, for how we're going to support NIL. And, uh, you know, there's your traditional, um, you know, fundraising, um, charitable contribution, large major donor gift, um, charitable contribution um, uh, channel that we're bringing money in through, Con- continuing to pursue that, working very closely with the Razorback Foundation uh, and administration to, um, you know, to try to identify the individuals who would support NIL from that standpoint. Um, but that model, that model alone is not going to cut it. All right. Uh, You have a lot of people who have been giving uh, through that model over the last couple of years. And, um, you know, to support NIL at an institution like the University of Arkansas and the SEC, it takes a lot of funding, right, to to make that happen. And you can't keep going back to those same donors and asking for, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's just not sustainable. And so uh, this model adds those two other legs to the stool. And those those legs of the stool are a fan membership club. It allows for all fans to get involved uh, and, and have a bit of an ownership stake in uh, the success of their team, right? And what we've seen is, uh, you know, pretty good response to that since Arkansas Edge was announced. Um, you know, right out of the gate, there were about three or 400 members who signed up. Um, we launched the drive for five campaign, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and since then about, you know, another 200 or a little more than 200 people have signed up. And our goal is with drive for five is to get to 5,000 members. We know we can do that for a number of reasons. Um, the, uh, our fan base is way too passionate, uh, for this not to, uh, not to be successful. Um, number two, what, you know, we're, you can look at our program and say that uh, maybe we're a little behind in this arena, uh, uh, other schools. And that's true because Arkansas Edge and, and this fan membership program is just getting started. But when you look across the country, you see other programs that have been in existence for a little while who have 5,000 members, 6,000 members, you know, eight, nine, 10,000 members. And uh, you know, given our unique situation here where we have an undivided fan base um, and we have no pro sports team to contend with, we're the only school in the SEC that can say that. So if other schools are getting to that 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 mark, we can easily get there. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I think, you know, we're rolling out a number of benefits and uh, uh, activities for that group to participate in, uh, to feel like they are a part of what's going on and to give them a little bit of an inside look at what, what happens um, with student athletes or behind the scenes. This last weekend, we took a, you know, a number of members on a tour of the Fred Smith Center, right? And that's not an experience that a lot of fans get. And so, you know, being a member of Arkansas Edge, uh, that we're going to do things like that. Um, we have a tailgate uh, exclusively for members this weekend for the spring football game on Saturday before the game. So, you know, members can come by and, and, um, you know, grab a little snack and uh, say, hi, say hi, sign up for some things that we're going to give away. Um, you know, they could win sideline passes for the game that day and, uh, and, and a few other things. So we're trying to do some things to kind of keep them engaged, make it fun, uh, for them. Not that it's just a monthly, monthly dues that they're paying to, to something. Right. Uh, And ultimately that's the, that's the value is that, you know, they're supporting their NIL, NIL for efforts for the team that they love. Um, but we also want them to feel like they're a part of it too. And then the third leg of the stool is corporate partnerships, which is kind of what NIL is really supposed yeah. to be about, mm-hmm. right? Is a student athlete working with a company or a brand uh, to help promote that that company. Um, truly leaning in to that student athlete's name, image, and likeness, right? To promote that brand and to bring, uh, bring awareness to what that brand is trying to accomplish uh, and to help drive value for that brand. So those are the kind of three legs of the stool and, and, and that'll continue to evolve over time for us. As we grow membership, we will continue to grow rewards and benefits and experiences for that group. 
um, as we uh, develop, um, you know, some uh, our business partnerships, um, you know, we're going to evolve that based upon what companies want to accomplish, right? We're going to, our program is to customize a, uh, a, program that works for that company, whatever they're trying to accomplish. Yes. And that's where my background really comes in handy is I have a background in marketing strategy and advertising. So when I go in to talk to a company about what could this look like, what I find is that most of them say, I want to get involved, but I don't know how to, I would even do anything with a student athlete. Mm -hmm. I can come in with a couple of ideas uh, and brainstorm with them. And then once I, uh, once uh, I can, uh, give them a, an idea of what they could do, then the ball kind of starts rolling from there, right? But it's because I'm able to apply um, uh, a little bit of strategy and cast a little bit of a vision for them as to how it would work um, that that um, we're getting some traction there because of that. So, well, let me ask you something real quick. You know, with you know traditionally in the past, like it's always been, you know, you give the foundation, get tickets, blah, 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 you get this and that. And that's traditionally what's way it has been for yeah. ever, not just in Arkansas, but everywhere. How difficult is it, you know, people probably my age or whatever that, you know, they've given their certain amount of money every year, they get their same tickets, understanding the importance of Arkansas Edge, yeah. because at the end of the day, it is that money's putting that that player out on the field and we all want to win and, yeah. and be competitive. How hard is it to get that message? Has it been difficult or is everybody just bought in automatically? No, I mean, it is because, um, you know, there, there's a, there's some education that needs to take mm -hmm. place there. Um, you know, a lot of people have a little bit of confusion and they have questions around how does this impact my Razorback foundation gift or my tickets or parking or any of the other benefits that they get from the Razorback foundation. And the answer is it's completely separate. Right. And it has to be right now. It has to be because of NCAA policy. Um, the policy states that no NIL funding, uh, no benefits like tickets and parking or anything that the university can bestow uh, uh, that they own uh, can be a benefit of NIL uh, gifting. And so it has to be completely separate. Um, and in, in, in that's a, once you understand that, then it's easier to kind of understand that, hey, it's not going to impact that. What I'm doing over at the Razorback Foundation is uh, is one thing, and then so, uh, uh, supporting NIL is another. Um, both of the both of the organizations have important missions for this university, right? NIL is the way forward. And it has to happen, right? We have to support it if we want to be competitive. Um, and uh, but we also have to support the Razorback Foundation too because they're providing the scholarships that also get kids to come to school here as well. Um, that's a that's also a table stakes, right? Uh, and then raising money for you know uh, for other capital projects like you know um, the renovation of Bud Walton Arena that has to take place. You know, um, and renovations on uh, facilities across campus. We have some of the best facilities in the country no when doubt. you look at them collectively, no doubt. Uh, but you also have to take care of those. You, if you want those facilities to continue to be uh, the best in the country, uh, you have to take care of those as well. And so I work really closely with Ryan White at the Razorback Foundation and his staff on, um, you know, when you have situations where somebody is trying to figure out where to put their money uh, and what best to do. We work with that donor uh, to try to um, uh, help them make the best decision for them and what they want to support. Well, good deal. Bray? Well, you have a plan for these corporate sponsors and, you know, kind of help them um, iron out what they're looking for, mm -hmm. even if they, they don't know. Um, for that one leg of just a common Arkansas fan, mm -hmm. how, how does it work where I'm going to put in this $25 a month or whatever that level may be? Where does that money go? Do I get to yeah. decide where that goes? How does that work for him? Yeah. So uh, it's a good question. And yeah, so you do get to decide. You get to designate mm -hmm. the sport that you want your monthly contribution to go to. Right. And so what we will do is, um, uh, you know, we're constantly uh, we have commitments to student athletes on campus already. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what we're constantly doing is looking for those opportun NIL opportunities for them to earn that compensation against that commitment that we have for them. Mm -hmm. Right. So fake numbers. Um, if we have a commitment to a student athlete, 
for $10,000 this year, uh, then we're looking for ways to get them involved in the community or with businesses to meet that $10,000 commitment for them. Right. Okay. And so we'll work either with nonprofits in the, in the, uh, in the community. Uh, you know, we work a lot with, um, uh, the Potter's house and, uh, you know, other, uh, Ozasa and a number of other, uh, nonprofits in the community to send student athletes there to work for them. They're earning the money, right? They are going out to work for that, uh, nonprofit to earn that money and also use their name, image, and likeness to bring awareness to what that organization is doing mm -hmm. so that it can, it can garner additional support from the community based upon the visibility uh, and awareness that gets generated from them helping. So what we do with, uh, with that uh, monthly contribution is we're looking for those opportunities for student athletes. And then, uh, and then we apply that money towards that, uh, sure. that initiative for that month, um, uh, based upon the designation that the, that the member gave whenever they signed up. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry to interrupt because a lot of perception out there, there's no sweat equity, you know, oh. I mean, it's, it's, it, yeah. you know, they're getting, you know, we, once a month we show up and get our check yeah. and we play ball, but it's nothing like that. Not at it? this university. Yeah. Uh, I can't speak for other universities and I can, I, we know that that's happening at other universities out there. Um, but the rules are very clear uh, from the NCAA. So there, there are still some NIL rules that mm -hmm. you have to follow with the NCAA. And one of them is that it cannot be pay for play and that they must still earn their money. They must, there's a, there's a quid pro quo. They have to do something to earn the money. And that's one of the things that we're really proud about with our program is that we have very strict rules around that. Uh, and there's a lot of compliance work that has to happen on the back end of that. Um, you know, our team does all that compliance work to make sure that that student athlete is staying eligible, that the university doesn't get in trouble. And we're reporting that up through the university where, you know, that part of the NCAA policy is that it has to be reported so that if the NCAA ever wants to come and investigate, there's somewhere that has all of the records and all that compliance work that's been done, they can review. Well, Bray, you might have to talk about the NCAA a little bit. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. How intimidating that can be. Well, we were, that story a little bit. We were talking in here, uh, obviously here at Ben's apartment on Dixon. Uh, we were sitting here before you, before you got here. Uh, my freshman year, um, Petrino was head coach, uh, and, and I was a, you know, a somewhat recruited, um, athlete at a high school and, uh, I'd signed with Arkansas and about two months in, I think Petrino calls me up to the office and I come in there and it was in the, the coach's staff room. So, you know, it's a big, long round yeah. table and there's two people on one end, a recorder looked just like that in the middle, had me sit on the other end. And the NCAA, and I think I can tell the story. I mean, they, they told me at the time I couldn't, but here we are. Um, well, they're going to do it to you now. Don't get yeah. me in trouble. <laughs> no, <right? laughs> now Chris might be in trouble. Me and you I, are. No. I reserve the right yes. for no comment. Yes, we, we can cut this out if we need to. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they, they came through and they asked me about all of my recruiting trips. Uh, and they said, you know, who took you to this trip? Uh, where did you stay? What did you do? Um, did you receive? Did they pay for your food? And it was about an uh, it was an, an, an uh, a different university. So they weren't looking at Arkansas or anything like that, but it was one of those things that it has changed so much mm -hmm. to where I was a 17 year old kid getting grilled for if I got a, a steak bought for me or not, where now, I mean, it is just tens of thousands of dollars more than that. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and let's just change the landscape of college football. Absolutely. I mean, and you look back over even just the last five or 10 years, uh, that universities were getting in trouble for things that are completely legal now, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. uh, it, it seems a little crazy. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, but, and, and that's part, that's part of why it is, um, so earth shattering, right? Like, I mean, that was forever the law of the land, right? You knew as a recruit, uh, that there were, there were things that couldn't be done. Mm -hmm. Right. And coaches know that. And it's just, it, it's drilled into, it was drilled into everybody's head, right. Yeah. Um, that you cannot do these things. There are lines you cannot cross. And now suddenly you can, and yeah. that's okay. And mm -hmm. we're all supposed to parade around and think that that's like, that like we should just feel comfortable with that and whatever. And so that's an adjustment period for everybody yeah. uh, with all of this, but also you're still trying to figure out where the line is, mm -hmm. right? Cause the line really isn't drawn very clearly. Uh, and, and so, um, you know, I think, I think it's going to evolve and we're going to get to that, uh, a point where the dry, the lines are very clear. Um, 
I mentioned earlier that the NCAA is considering some policies. Those policies are to draw much more clear lines, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it's going to take is um, it's going to take governing bodies, leadership uh, at at the highest levels to uh, to draw those lines, right? Whether that's the NCAA or it's federal legislation or whatever it is, and it's probably a combination of those. It's probably also um, you know, conferences or whatever becomes of conferences, uh, you know, deciding what those rules are going to be so that everyone knows what the rules are. Everyone is governed by the same rules and they're very clear. And it's a system that works Mm -hmm. because right now it's such a, you know, what coaches can do or not do what collectives can do or not do and how collectives can either talk to the university or official communications or not. And coaches can be involved in fundraising, but they can't be involved in deal making processes. And then like all this, all these like crazy things that are rules that are drawn in ways that like just don't make sense for the system. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it it creates a lot of, uh, uh, um, uh, confusion. And uh, so I think, you know, hopefully the lines kind of get drawn in such a way that it, that it eliminates the confusion. It makes the process very clear, transparent, straightforward. Uh, and uh, it, it, it would help student athletes if it, if it were that way. It would help their families. It would help our coaches. It would help our administration. It would help collectives. I mean, it, it would just it would make things so much better for the whole system because the lines were very clear before. Right. Yeah. So you've gone from, a, you know, a, 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 you know, hard and fast rule and everybody knew where the line was to a place where you're just not real sure. And, yeah. and so there has to be some clarity that comes. Yeah. And especially with, you know, announcements like what's kind of been going on in the Twitter space the last couple of days. Um, it sounds like the Tysons have made a sizable donation to uh, NIL or are going to or whatever that may be. Yeah. So nothing is official. Yeah. Right. And uh, so um, that is what the reports are. Yeah. I'll say that for now, sure. you know, um, and in uh, I can't really speak on it any more than that mm-hmm. uh, until those uh until it's it's made official and quite honestly i'm not even a part of the conversation at the moment yeah so is that like so if somebody did come in with a bulk here's six million dollars to the nil fund is that uh you, please you, please sure. somebody <laughs> <do that. laughs> and, and, and you and so okay i want this to go to basketball the yeah. basketball team's got six million dollars that's right and that's where uh, the collective edge now comes in and says here's this pool yeah um and then you offer those opportunities for kids right. to earn the money. That's right. Yeah. We, uh, you know, we work, um, to, uh, you know, establish, uh, relationships with those student athletes, um, make sure that they, you know, that we're, we're retaining them or, uh, once they're here on campus that we're meeting whatever their expectation is for NIL, mm-hmm. um, and, and, you know, trying to keep them here, uh, once, um, you know, once the season's over. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, uh, you know, big donations like that or corporate deals uh, like that uh, go such a long way in in helping us to create these opportunities. So, yeah. um, you know, but that said, we want to build out a, you know, a full um, diversified um, program right across each of those three legs of that stool that I talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we, we I think it for us to maximize mm-hmm. the, um, the our potential here, we need to address each of those areas and, 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 and build each of those three areas up. And, you know, we mentioned it earlier. It's, it's almost like, you know, you, you want to come on these on, on radio shows or, or you want to sit here and, and talk about some of the obstacles in front of Arkansas football. This is an opportunity to, to get involved directly and, and bring kids to the school and, right. and bring uh, athletes who are going to go out there and compete. And what it sounds like over the last couple of days, at least in the, the Twitter verse, um, that maybe some of the, you got a lot more edge, uh, members, subscribers yeah. or donations. As, yeah. How has that looked? Yeah. So we, you know, uh, kind of twofold, uh, we launched a drive for five campaign, uh, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. That was a, that was a bit of a boost and we're, you know, continuing to drive towards 5,000 members. Um, and that was the, that was the goal of that campaign. And, and, uh, we've got a good start for that. Um, but then obviously, you know, uh, coaching, uh, searches and decisions and, you know, uh, media, um, uh, reports have 
uh, also provided an additional boost uh, to some of that too for people who are enthusiastic about what could you know what could be um, and um, I, you know what I think that our fans want is um, uh, they want to feel a part of it for mm-hmm. sure. And they can definitely be a part of it, right? They, this is a very direct way that they can have an impact on the success of, uh, our sports programs. Yeah. Right. Um, and then they, they, they want to be a part of that success when it happens, you know, uh, and feel like they are, um, um, a, uh, kind of get that, have that kind of like ownership stake in the success that happens and then get to celebrate that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I think we're going to, you know, we're going to try to provide some of those opportunities, right. For that behind the scenes, um, you know, inside the program kind of a look, um, so that they can feel like they truly are a part of what's happening. Well, talk to me about this. And we, we, we have coaches on all the time, all different areas and, and things like that. How does a process work? Say I'm, you know, at Fayetteville High School, I'm being recruited to University of Arkansas. I'm going to commit or thinking about committing. Committing. Do they go see the coach or do they go see you when it gets down <laughs> to that part? How, and I know yeah. it's early and, you you know, you haven't been doing it real long, but how does that work? Is a coach involved in this or are y'all, you guys when that prospect comes in? Um, it's a, it's a murky process. Yeah. Like I was talking about earlier, uh, that it, there needs to be some more clarity, um, uh, as to how this process should work. Um, you know, it's, it is not permissible for a coach to make an offer to a student athlete. And it was also not permissible prior to the injunction with Tennessee for a collective to, be involved in uh, any kind of a discussion with a prospective student athlete. That injunction, essentially, that injunction removed that rule, right? That a collective could have a conversation with a prospective student athlete. And we're, we're kind of in the process of evaluating like what should, what, what level of involvement should we have? Um, because just because the rules are suspended right now, doesn't mean they will always be suspended. Um, and doesn't mean that whatever we do now couldn't have a consequence later down the road. Right. Um, so we're kind of evaluating what, what, where we need to play in that space. Um, but typically kind of how it has happened or what have you is there's an expectation that a student athlete has, right. Of, of what it's going to look like or what they want when they come in. And the conversation that coaches or, you know, Bray, you know this from being recruited, it's not just a coach that you're talking to. There's a whole staff of people that are involved in the recruiting process. Um, You know, they can point towards a couple of things. Um, Number one is the strength of their collective that they work, that works with, uh, that supports their student athletes, right? If we have a strong collective, um, you know, if we have a collective that is competitive, that raises, you know, 10, 12, $15 million a year, um, they can talk about that, mm-hmm. right. And say, listen, there's a big, big pie, right. And you can have a piece of that. They can also talk about examples of what has a player that's come before them, right. Uh, maybe at a similar position group or similar caliber of player, and they can talk, you know, use that as kind of a case study example of what could be possible, right? Then once they land here on campus, um, we can have that conversation with them sure. and determine what, how we can best meet their expectations or not. Um, and, but, you know, prior to that, there's really no promise to them uh, in, in coming here, right? It's not until we put that contract in front of them once they're here on campus. How that will change going forward with the injunction, we're still trying to figure that out. But, yeah, so that's kind of how it works. How much do you work? We had Matthew Shepard on, who was Speaker of the House. He's the one that wrote the bill and all that. Uh, We had Lance Taylor on, who was AAA, because there there was a lot of about NIL going into high school and all that deal. How do you work with with – with Congress much on, I mean, I, not yet. Okay. Uh, but, but I, you imagine, will, I imagine that there'll be some, you know, consultation in that, uh, if there are state laws that need to change, um, you know, as I would expect that they would talk to, um, you know, any of the universities in the state about it. Right. Because, uh, every, you know, 
every university in the state has different needs yeah. uh, in terms of NIL, right? Um, and so I would expect that they would that they would you know have multiple conversations. So you got the collective, and um, obviously you, you can't like you said you wait until that contract is in front of them when they're on campus. Yeah. Um, if I'm a high school recruit uh, and I've got somewhat of a big name uh, from Northwest Arkansas, can I go out on my own and secure these deals? Yeah. Is that kind of? Yeah, I mean, you can. You definitely yeah. can. Um, it's a, <clears throat> it's a because of the murkiness of all yeah. of it. Uh -huh. um, what what we would suggest to any student athlete out mm -hmm. there, uh, prospective student athlete, is that you work with a with somebody who understands the rules, right? Sure. Because you can, if you as a student athlete are unsure of the rules, and you're working with a business that definitely doesn't understand the rules that's yeah. not their business right mm -hmm. um it is really easy to cross the line um because it while there while a lot is permissible that wasn't permissible before not everything is not sure. it's not you know uh, uh uh there there are still rules and so uh we would help them navigate those rules mm -hmm. right and and if uh, what i have told current student athletes on campus if a company approaches you uh to do a deal send them to us and we will deal with them, right? Because number one, <clears throat> they're busy student athletes. They're students. They have class that they have to go to. They have homework. They have work study groups. They have, you know, projects to work on, all those kind of things. They're athletes. They have workouts. They have practices. They have film sessions. They have, uh, you know, uh, all of the other things, games, all the things that come up with being an athlete on campus too, uh, and then now you add NIL to all of this and the commitments that they have to make for that as well. Uh, and then, you know, try to have a personal life as well. So uh, it's, a, it's a lot for them as 17, 18, 19, 20 year old uh, young adults to try to manage. And so it, there, a lot of them are, you know, uh, whether the amount is small or big, um, this is an opportunity that's not ever really been presented to them too. And sure. so they need somebody that's kind of advocating for them. Um, and that's my number one priority is our student athletes. Right. Um, and I want to keep them eligible. I want to try to get, find the best deal for them. Um, and, uh, and I can have that business to business strategy conversation with that company, uh, to help figure out what it is that they're trying to accomplish to make all of this work too. Right. So given my background and experience, uh, I want our student athletes to lean into that with mm -hmm. me. Right. Uh, and we'll go and not necessarily represent them as a, uh, as an agent would. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it is in a way it's kind of similar, sure. right? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, to, to do the best thing for them. I'm also trying to accomplish whatever that business is trying to accomplish too. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and so we can kind of help, um, uh, be the go between, uh, for not just getting the, uh, getting a deal done, uh, but also once that deal is signed, um, you know, all the compliance that has to happen on the back end, we take care of that for that business. Cause otherwise that business is going to have to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, or, or the student athletes going to have to try to figure out how to navigate that. Uh, we manage all of that. We manage all the money. We manage all the contracts. We, yeah, and we make sure that just everything is above board, uh, sure. and, and gets reported back to the, uh, to the university, the way that it's supposed to. Uh, and then as I talked about before, student athletes are busy right? They have busy lives and they can get forgetful. We're kind of there also with the cattle prod <laughs> to make sure that they're fulfilling their commitment yeah. uh, to that company as well. So that company isn't always having to try to chase after them. If, if they're trying to get something set up, we can do that. We're on campus, um, you know, and have the relationships with the student athletes, Sydney on my team, um, uh, who's our director of operations. She knows literally every student athlete on this campus. Mm -hmm. Um, she spends a lot of time in the Jones center with them. She's a former student athlete herself, a gymnast. Um, so she has a lot of those connections already with them. Uh, and, 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 and so, you know, that's really helpful uh, to leverage our relationships with them. Also leveraging our relationship whenever you're a company and you say, Hey, listen, I want to get a student athlete involved, but A, I don't have any relationships with student athletes and B, I don't know who would be the right student athlete for what I'm trying to accomplish or the brand that I have or the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the brand perception that I have or whatever. 
since we do have those relationships, we can connect them to the right student athlete. I've sat down with a lot of our student athletes and asked them, what are you interested in, right? What kind of companies do you want to work with? Um, what do you like to do in your personal life? What do you like to, um, uh, uh, you know, what are your interests and in, in, uh, uh, or what would you as your own personal brand want to represent, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because if it's not authentic, if you don't feel it, it's not a good experience for the student athlete or for that company or brand, right? It needs to be a good fit. Uh, and so there's a lot that goes into it, right? Um, and so I think that, you know, there's a big value, um, a point of value that we serve in helping our student athletes and in helping those companies figure out what the right match is and making it work uh, and, uh, and keeping everybody kind of within the rules uh, that we have to follow. It's a full-time job, man. Just that one thing <laughs> could be a full-time time. job. Yeah. Well, yeah. talk to me about this as far as the education part, as far as educating the athletes, student athletes about taxes, about yeah. being good students. You know, yeah. I was 19 years old. I didn't have a clue about taxes. Yeah. I just knew if I worked in the summer, somebody took some of my money and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it about it. Well, how, how do you educate those people about, you know, taxes and being good stewardess and, yeah. You know, you know, some people are big spenders. Some people save. I mean, yeah. that's a personal deal. But that's right. But the, those the parts, the legalization as far as taxes and yeah. all that part. Yeah. So there is a you know a, a, a misconception out there that they don't have to pay taxes on this, and they do, <laughs> yeah. and they do, uh, and that is also yeah. kind of a you know a, uh, I'll say a rude awakening for some mm-hmm. of them. That's a becoming an adult, right? Taxes are <laughs> part of life, uh, even for nil. And so uh, we we talk to them a little bit about it, but there are um, student development groups on campus with flagship um, in the uh, in Justin Johnson's group on campus. They talk with them a lot about um, um, paying taxes, wealth management, that kind of thing. They have guest speakers that come in from uh, from industry uh, that come in to help consult and advise them. Um, and then student athletes can always go to that group if they're looking for, uh, if they have questions or they're looking for advice on what to do, they can always connect them with the professionals and the resources that can help to help, help advise them and take care of them in that manner. So, wow. well, it sounds yeah. like it's a, it's a murky situation. And then like you said, it's a murky, just all of it, but Arkansas edge, you know, you, you'll have a clear path, a clear plan and they're taking care of the athletes, That's um, right. which is obviously the most important. Um, part of this while bringing um, top talent to the university. So right now with everything going on, um, potentially a new basketball coach um, soon, uh, hopefully, uh, and and some NIL money coming in. What do we need to tell the, the hog fan of today who's excited about the program right now, how to get involved? Yeah. So uh, I would say get involved. You know, there's, there's three different ways to get involved as we, as we've talked about, get involved in the way that makes the most sense for you, right? Mm -hmm. If it is through the fan membership club, that's, that's great. Um, you know, every bit helps whether it's 25 at the $25 level or the 250 level or anything in between. Uh, it is, it, it, it is all helpful. Um, if you, you know, don't care so much about the, uh, being a part of that club and, and kind of the benefits that come with that. Cause that's not, not tax deductible, right. Mm-hmm. To, to, to be involved in that way. There's benefits that come with it. So it's not considered tax deductible. Um, if you, if, if you would rather help in a different manner with like a one-time gift, even if it's $25, um, uh, a one-time gift or a recurring monthly gift that is tax deductible there, then you can give kind of through the charitable route. Mm-hmm. That's not just for people who want to give 5,000, 10,000, a hundred thousand dollars. That's for anybody at no matter lo- what the level, if they want to give a tax deductible gift, they can do that through that route as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you're a business owner, right reach out to us and we'll work with them on, uh, you know, finding the right student athletes or finding the right opportunity, even working just with Arkansas edge, right? Um, there's business, um, uh, partnerships that we would like to, to form that, um, you know, are co-branded or, uh, 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 you know, co-marketing opportunities with Arkansas edge and that company too, um, that can help generate the funds for, for NIL as well. So they would just need to reach out to, uh, to me through our website. There's an, a way for them to reach out if they're interested in that, mm-hmm. uh, and get involved that way. And I would just say, you know, get involved at whatever level you can, uh, and whatever's comfortable for you. 
considering your Razorback Foundation membership and all of that kind of stuff too. Um, that's all a part of the mix. What's a push for, you know, Bray sitting here as a former player, alumni, getting those guys involved, obviously, you know, they're supportive yeah. and, and you are so probably targeting some of those guys and, and, uh, they've gone on been very successful yeah. in life. Uh, what's the push of getting to the, you know, especially former players and, and, yeah. and alumni back. Yeah. So time. we're, um, you know, the, the, there hasn't been much of a push yet, but the a club is meeting, uh, they have their annual event this Friday. Yeah, so we're, we're going to spend some time with the a club, uh, with some of the events that they have and educate them. Um, you know, of course we want them to be involved, uh, financially if possible. Uh, but as former student athletes, they have big voices, right? Bray has a big voice. Um, you know, all of our former student athletes do, they are beloved Razorbacks, right? Once a Razorback, always a Razorback. And there's opportunities all over the state for you. Cause, because, um, you know, this fan base loves, uh, our Razorbacks in that same manner, use your voice, right. To help us because we only have, you know, we only have so much power in our voice. Um, and, uh, we need to continue to spread, uh, awareness about what we're doing and educate fans and help them understand how to get involved and to encourage them to get involved, right. That this is important because this is how, um, this is how we compete going forward. <clears throat> and I think we have a massive opportunity, uh, to do that given our unique situation in this state, you know, uh, no other power five team and no pro sports team to compete with. That's we're the only program in the sec that can say that. Right. And so I think we need to take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, and truthfully, it doesn't take that much uh, for us to get to a point where we are highly competitive with NIL. Um, you know, if we had, if we reach our goal of 5,000 members, if everyone joined to the $25 level, that's $3 million a year, 5,000 people at $25 a month. And a lot of people say, well, like my $25 isn't going to make much difference. Yes, it will. If we have 5,000 people doing it, right. Mm -hmm. If you bump that up to an average and really, I think we'll average about $50 a month, um, because there's the 25, 50, 100 and 250. That's $6 million a year for NIL. Wow. That is a really good start on NIL every year, right? A good foundational base for us to have. Um, if you, uh, you know, and then stack on top of that, the, the partnership opportunities with businesses and, um, and then large donations from, you know, bigger, bigger donors. That is, man, we'd be in such a great place if we had that in place, you know? Well, and that's the key and that's where everything's going. I, yeah. I get tickled because, you know, you got buddies, I got buddies, you know, Razorbacks might lose a game and they're complaining. And I always go, how much money do you give the NIL? You yeah. know, that pretty much shuts them up pretty yeah. quick. You know, if, you know, plus it gives them an opportunity to be involved, you know, looking out there and, yeah. and being supportive of those, of those yeah. kids. You and know? it's a, you know, uh, it's a, there's no guarantee, right? Like, yeah. I mean, even if we had the best, collective in the country that doesn't you can't just like pencil in the national championships yeah. in each sport because of that right mm -hmm. uh but you have put your team our teams in a much better position yeah. to be competitive and to win that uh if we do support it i can tell you what will happen if we don't support it yeah. right mm -hmm. we like you know, we, uh, we won't even sniff, uh, uh, any kind of, uh, championship if we don't. And, and so, and it's not just in football, basketball and, and baseball, though, those three sports, we obviously have to, you know, have to support at a level that's competitive with some of the other sports on campus, a little bit goes a long way for them. Right. Um, you know, just, for example, our men's tennis program, we have some really passionate former uh, Razorback tennis alums that want to support that program. And they're coming together uh, to raise some money uh, to support NIL for men's tennis. That's going to be huge for our tennis yeah. program. You know, if they raise $50,000 or $100,000 a year just for that program, that will be huge for Coach Jay, right? Uh, and so uh, because when you look across the country, that's not a support. That's not a sport that is being heavily supported. So just a little bit sure. of impact uh, of of uh, of uh, money being raised for them makes a huge impact um, because it's an opportunity that 
you know, that, that, that a prospective student athlete can see here that they wouldn't see somewhere else and, you know, could decide to come here because of that opportunity to earn NIL here. Sure. So, you know, it's a, it's, I think we should have no problem supporting all of our sports on campus, you know, because people have affinity for different sports, not just football uh, or not just basketball. And, um, and so, you know, I say in that manner too, give where you want to give, right? Give where you feel like we, you think you can make the most impact. We have to take care of football. We have to take care of basketball. Um, hopefully we've got some good help with that, you sure. know, uh, soon. And we've got to take care of baseball um, because those are big revenue driving sports on this campus. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the rest of our sports, women's basketball and gymnastics and softball and those other programs, they need it too, you know? So, and, and for, and, and going back to former student athletes, if they can lend their voice to it. Right. And uh, when we are on social media, you know, pushing an initiative like drive for five or, um, uh, or whatever else we might be doing out there, uh, you know, they can help amplify that on social media by using their voice and their platform and their reach to, you know, share that kind of stuff and encouraging, uh, encouraging Razorback fans to, and supporters to get involved. Wow. Well, I know you obviously, like you said, you can't pencil in a national championship. Um, but I feel like if we get to 5,000 members of Arkansas edge combined with some of the news that's floating around on Twitter, mm -hmm. Pencil and Natty Championship for the Hogs coming down the road pretty soon. <laughs> uh, no guarantees. Yeah. No <laughs> guarantees. But, uh, you know, it goes a long way for yeah. sure, right? Like you set your team up for a lot of success. Uh, if, uh, if, if, because, you know, at the end of the day, um, the best talent in the country is going to be attracted to yeah. the places that have the strongest NIL programs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and back when we were talking about, you know, kind of how the process works, when a coach can point towards a really strong collective, right? That's a big carrot uh, mm -hmm. and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a huge factor in a student athlete, prospective student athlete's decision on where they're going to go. We can sugarcoat yeah. it and say that it's not, but it is. It is. Right? That's the biggest I, carrot. It, yeah. yeah. It is one of the biggest carrots. It, you know, used to be facilities or... Mm -hmm you know, history and number of rank championship rings on your fingers and all that kind of stuff and trophies in the cases and all that kind of stuff. And that all is still a factor, right? Um, you know, pro potential for some of the sports like basketball or, or, or football. Uh, but NIL has, be, uh, and that opportunity has become a huge uh, factor. Uh, and in some cases, the primary factor, you know, and talking to some of some coaches, that's the only question that gets asked sure. is, you know, what's my NIL potential here? And, and, uh, you know, we've got to arm our coaches with a strong collective to be able to point to, mm -hmm. uh, and, and those examples of how we have take, taken care of the student athletes that have come through before. Um, because if we don't do that, then we're not going to be successful in building out the, the, the most competitive teams that we can. Yep. Well, tell me this, if I wanted to sign up today and, where do we do this at and where do we find it? Well, I've got this pledge card in the back of my pocket. No, I didn't, I didn't bring any. Uh, uh, so you, you know, if you, if anybody wanted to sign up today, either to make a tax deductible donation, uh, one time or recurring, um, or to sign up for the fan membership club, they can go to Arkansas edge And, uh, there's options to do all that online. Um, we take good old fashioned checks and that kind of stuff too. Um, uh, but the fastest way to get your membership or your contribution counted is to just go to our website and, uh, at Arkansas edge and, um, uh, and, and set all of that up. Cool. All the options are on there. Uh, all the membership levels for the fan club and all the benefits that come with that. And then as we continue to add benefits, you know, so for example, we just, you know, recently announced with the drive for five campaign, 10% off at, um, you know, whenever you order in store at Wright's barbecue, uh, right. Mm -hmm. If you show your membership, um, card, then Wright's barbecue will give you 10% off there. And we're going to continue to add benefits like that throughout this campaign. So we'll have all that on our website as well. And then also kind of our corporate partners, um, because a lot of those corporate partners are going to offer those benefits, um, 
So we'll, we'll also talk about those corporate partnerships on there too. Uh, and so they can learn more about that. And if there are opportunities to support those businesses that would help uh, Arkansas Edge, then they can learn about them online. Wow. Yeah. What level gets you that hoodie? The hoodie uh, is clean. This, yeah. I love this yeah. hoodie, man. That's phenomenal. It's actually really comfortable. Um, it's not Nike like a mm-hmm. lot of people have uh, asked us to, to, to provide. Um, but it's a really solid hoodie. It's very warm uh, it, and it's it's very sturdy. Uh, but at the 250 level uh, per month is what gets you the hoodie. And we're actually going through a process right now of reevaluating some of the swag that you get sure. at each level mm-hmm. uh, to determine how we right size that. Uh, I feel like it's skewed a little bit towards the upper end. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I want to share some love with um, with with folks at all levels. Um, and then also, um, we're going to continue to evaluate, you know, what that looks like too, what those, uh, what the swag looks like that you mm-hmm. get with each benefit, uh, with, with each level, um, and, and try to keep that fresh and change that out. We're also going to have a web store too, where you can buy the hoodie. If you just want to buy the hoodie, okay. um, it's not set up yet, but our team is working on that now. Mm-hmm. And so we'll have not just the merchandise that you get in the membership kits, um, but we'll have different colorways of all of it too. So we might have a red hoodie with the white logo, um, uh, and we might have you know various hats and koozies and things like that that we'll put up there. We're also trying to work on some uh, some deals with some branded merchandise uh, like mm-hmm. Nike and others. It's just hard to work with those companies sometimes. So sure. You can't, you can't have an on-demand model with them where, uh, where you, uh, you know, uh, where somebody puts in an order and then it gets fulfilled and created and fulfilled immediately. You have to put in big orders, bulk orders with them. And that's expensive to do. So I learned a lot, learned a whole lot. (laughs) You hit some and and we'll get you off here because I know you're busy is, uh, you said, you know, you could donate to specific sports. Yes. Can you donate to Pacific athletes? Uh, if you're doing a corporate partnership deal, okay. you can choose the athlete, right? Because that, that athlete's going to be uh, representing your brand and it needs to be a good fit for your brand. But if you are joining the fan membership club or you're giving a, a tax deductible charitable contribution, you can't choose the athlete, but you can choose the sport. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Or you can choose the general fund. Um, if you don't, if you decide, Hey, I'll let Arkansas Edge decide where the area of greatest need is for my contribution this month. Uh, then we can kind of direct it where the uh, where the greatest need is. Wow. Yeah. Well, man, I, I tell you what, appreciate you coming on. You educated us a lot because yeah. that's been coming up. People have been asking me, and yeah. uh, you know, yep. I know it goes to NIL, but people want to be educated because they're kind of in the dark about yeah. where that money's going. That's what we're here for. And, and, uh, I'll come on, part. I'll come on and, uh, and talk about any new initiatives that we have anytime you guys want me to. Well, good yeah. deal. Awesome. Yeah. Good deal. We'll, do it. well, man, we appreciate you coming on. So for Jeff Williams, coach Bray cook, we'll see you next time.